shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to part 12 of the A6 Intruder build. Now the Intruder itself isn't on the bench right now because it's basically ready to go for paint. Uh, it's got all the control surfaces and scoops and all that kind of shit installed. Basically, it doesn't have any of the landing gear stuff installed yet, and I still need to deal with the windscreen and a few little elements right around it. But other than that, it is, you know, bodywork is wrapped, everything is glued on, it's ready to go. However, before I get into that, I think it's important that I go ahead and deal with some of the ordnance, because I sure as shit don't want to do it later. Now, basically on this we have five pylons that we're dealing with, and the center pylon is going to have a tank on it, so that's not a big deal. Other than that, we've got the two that are attached permanently, basically right at the wing fold, because they're integral to the wing fold and the way the kit is designed, and then we've got two more that go right inside it, these guys. Now I've got some fancy Edward PE that I get to install on the bottom here that I just haven't yet, but as you can see, Trumpeter basically gives us three awesome square holes for installing sway braces. And Trumpeter would have you use the first one and the last one for some ungodly reason, I don't really know why. Looking at reference photos and also looking at Trumpeter's own parts, that doesn't work. It's uh, it's these front two that we really want to focus on. And that also lines up with the way that their multiple ejector racks work, which these are kind of a pain in the ass. But if you look, I've shaved off some of the actual mounting pins on these, but like these ones on the bottom, for example, they have little mounting pins right in the middle of the sway brace. And so if I can pick this up, Basically, those align perfectly with these holes. And look at that. You can attach it right there, just like that. Easy peasy. For some reason, that one seems a bit of a loose fit. That one holds it nice and securely, though. So, not too worried about these. My only concern is because I'm playing with resin ordnance that's a lot heavier than plastic. Um, that's not a lot of room to really play with there, which is a bit frustrating. Uh, I'd love to be able to maybe remove those and drill some holes and things like that, but as you can see, it's a mer. There's not really a lot of space, especially considering that, like, you know, a rock eye is going to be going on the back rear. That's a very thin piece to play with, so I'm probably going to have to rely on those stupid little posts. For these, we have different anti-sways. We've got these guys right here, which do not have that post, and they've got a little rectangle doomajiggy that sticks into here. But I think on these, I will be able to drill through, and I'm actually considering mounting these directly to the ordnance, and then just having them shook up into here when all is said and done. So. Yeah, cool. Okay, so from there, what's the ordinance looking like? Well, when I started this thing five years ago, I got some uh, AMS rock eyes, and they're you know they looked really cool at first. I thought, oh wow, these are you know so well detailed, blah blah blah. But then I, you know, then I got to painting them, and if you look over here, the texture is just awful. Um, very ripply and wavy and just not good and so yeah I'm not a fan of that so that was I think one of the things that actually kind of gave me pause on what I was doing I actually considered going with like a whole different approach in the intervening five years Video Aviation has come out with their own rock eyes which look much better and these things are sweet in terms of detail um, they actually 
fit up quite nicely. It's just they've got a butt join there, which is not cool. So we're going to have to have some fun drilling and posting and things like that. But we've got basically two of those. We have a LAU-10 Zuni rocket launcher, a big, you know, big old four-pot thing. As I mentioned in a previous video, during the uh, surface patrol missions, intruder crews were finding that the AGM-123 Skipper 2s were a bit unreliable, something with the propellant, and so they started throwing Zuni rockets on. Uh, it's unclear whether they threw them on to replace the Skipper 2s or in addition. So I'm just going to go with in addition because it's asymmetric and it looks cool. And this thing has, you know, the rockets sticking here and they're kind of somewhere else right now. I don't want to lose them. And I've got the little ass of this thing that just kind of glues on here. Very simple. And then some PE bits that stick in there so we don't have to worry about making a mess. But it's got a bunch of shit up here that we're going to have to remove in order to make sure that all the mounting points are where they need to be and so on and so forth. <clears throat> now the last one that we're working with we've seen on the bench before and that is the GBU-16 that is going to be converted into an AGM-123. So here we've got the bomb body, thousand pounder, really nice texture work on it. Here we've got the back part with the fins and as you can see I've gone in here and gouged out the track where the fins deploy from. I'm going to have to make my own fins to kind of stick in here. Uh, I think I've got these pretty well cut. I will say though, God, it was a pain in the ass. Um, there's no way to really put scribing tape or anything up here. So it's very much a seat of the pants type thing. But all's well that ends well. And I've got a Shrike motor that is going to go right on the back here, just like that. Now the actual 123s have, let's see, you know, the, the sort of conical part of the body here, not the fins, actually kind of cuts in and ends more like right in here. And this thing sticks in there, but I really don't trust myself to be able to cut that down without completely fucking this up. So we're just going to go with this accurate-ish. Now, before I go ahead and drill all of these various holes and shit, I want to go ahead and make sure that I've got the holes prepared for mounting up the rock eyes. And so I've marked the locations of basically the fins on this one. I need to do it on this one too. The idea here is we mark the You know, mark the 90, 180, etc. And we draw lines, and that helps us find the center. Okay, so just like that. And I've got to do the same thing on these. And we've also got to do it. I'm going to go ahead and do it on these guys too, just to. You know, it'd be really cool if I could just have something a bit more beefy than that loose fit. So let's go ahead and do that too. Now this one's going to be a bit tricky to get the uh, good straight lines going between them because it's recessed <clears throat> but I don't think it'll be that bad all right now I was struggling with you know I was thinking about doing the whole tape method where you put basically two lines kind of like you know one here and one over here you find the middle you do 90 degrees and you draw them together and they find the access point for you it's much easier to draw an X when we get when we can and so I figured I can use this circle template to help me get to my X's. If I can figure out a way to <laughs> hold the damn thing straight.
fingers crossed that these all fit up. That would be Now this is a needle scriber from MRP. It's great for scribing, but it's also really, really nice for poking holes and shit. It's kind of like my, uh... airbrush needle thing, but tougher metal, so it punches through a little bit easier. Okay. We're ready to drill some holes. <laughs> this one is very much a pilot hole because I need a much thicker thing to do that. But pilot holes are always good. All likelihood, these will not line up, and it will be frustrating. <sighs> this thing I've never figured out yet as a modeler is how to get these holes and butt joins to align. All right, let's see how this does. Hey, hey, check that out. Sweet. Actually works. Okay, now that we've got those butt joints drilled and all that stuff, it's time to go ahead and start marking out the mounting points. Now, I've gone ahead on this one and put a piece of tape down to mark where the holes are, and these front two here that we're focusing on are 17 millimeters exactly. We want to just sort of double check that. We can go off of these guys. Do, 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 do. I know this thing is all dirty. Yep, 17 millimeters again. So that's a pretty good range. I've gone ahead and tested with a 0.8 millimeter bit goes right in there nicely, so that's probably the size I'm going to stick with. One millimeter is a bit too big. So now it is time to go ahead and mark the holes. Now, some of these, like the rock eyes, they've already got that first mounting hole sitting right there, good to go. Uh, if you look again at it compared to the kit rock eye, that little dimple is basically in the same spot. So we can go with that. Solves that little easy win. And on the LAU 10, 
It's really simple. We just have to cut some shit off first. So in LAU 10, it is literally right here and right here. both those off for the thing to fit properly anyway. So there's that. That will work. Excellent. Okay. Now we're going to get out a special tool so that we can do this properly. Okay, so I've pulled out the Proxon drill press to get these done, and I'm currently away from my shotgun mic, so I apologize if the sound is all fucking crazy. God damn it. It's going to be fun trying to avoid uh, elbowing this thing as I go. All right. Gut check on this. Oh yeah, look at that. Perfect sizing. Sweet. Okay. That's more in line. Ish. I'm gonna pull out the second one and drill it because I'm not too happy with that. These guys should be pretty easy though. Yep, 
That's awesome. Pause for a few minutes, get the other LAU-10. Okay, we are back. I've gone ahead and grabbed a second LAU-10 canister. That's much better. It's got a good angle match to the pylon. It sits nice and firm. Yeah, that's definitely better. Cool. All right, before we put the drill press away and get on with the rest of the fun, um, I wanted to go ahead and try one more thing. There's a good chance this won't work. Basically, I've got these four sway braces that need to go onto the pylons that are going to be holding um, potentially the LAU-10, but definitely the AGM-123. So we have those inner pylons that don't have the multiple injector racks on them. And I need to drill holes in these fuckers. And this scares the shit out of me. Because they are not easy to hold. Looks like we got one of them in. Definitely one of those things where it feels like Trumpeter had a some idea of what it was doing, but then they just stopped halfway through and were like, eh, whatever. It's up to us to fix it. That could be problematic. Because it didn't quite hit the blockadoo that we're going for. This is a shitty thing to eyeball, though. Shitty thing to hold. Good news is, where are my pylons? Where the fuck did my pylons go? There they are. Good news is, I think these things have a whole lot of extra room to play with as they get on there. Okay, so I found a pretty trashy way of doing this, but it's it'll still get it done. Leaving them on the sprue and going from the top. So we got four nicely drilled holes. Okay, I am going to do some cleanup, put the drill press away, and we will be back.
Okay, so we're back to the regular setup. Holes have been drilled, things like that. Now it is time to go ahead and attach the deployed fins to the AGM-123. For this, I have cut several little pieces of styrene that should do the job. Nothing fancy. I wouldn't have minded the chance to go fancy, but, you know, it is what it is. Kind of sighting this along the there's one. So I'm basically sighting these along the length of the fin to make sure that they're sitting vertical, all that good stuff. Four. So there you have it. Deployed fins. I honestly do not know if the end of at the end of this if I'm gonna use the pin that I've got in here or not. But for now it's pretty useful to at least kinda of hold this. Okay, so with that, I think that we've got the weapons sitting in a pretty decent place. They've all got their various mounts drilled out. Rock eyes have their tails connected to the main body of the uh, of the canister. LAU-10 has the rear glued on. The AGM-123 has various holes drilled for the nose seeker unit, the tail fin unit. It's got the fins deployed. And all that we have to do is rig up the thing to mount the Shrike motor to the back. So. Okay, so now it's time to knock out the next piece of the puzzle, which is getting the Shrike motor installed onto the back of the AGM-123. For that, first we need to install this little brass tube that I'm using sort of as my pin. It's fairly simple. We're just going to put a little dollop of Ammo's Ultra Glue, which is a, basically a PVA glue. Um, why not super glue? Well, because I want this to have a little bit of flex as we get everything set up. And the way I've got it set up, I have this 3 millimeter styrene rod that will come in here and basically sit around this place, right? Oh, shit. We're going to do that a bit differently then. So the basic idea is we've got this pin to hold it into the whole fin assembly area. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to drill a 3mm hole back here because that's a giant fucking hole. We've got the 3 millimeter styrene rod that just kind of does its thing, and I've drilled one millimeter hole in the middle of that, and this styrene rod slots perfectly into the strike motor housing. Or perfectly enough that it still has some room to flex around and all that good stuff. So, alright, maybe I'm going to go about this a little bit differently than I had planned. That's fine, everything's great. We can use a little bit of Loctite. The 
good old CA that will absolutely positively hold these things quite well. So there's that. piece inserts in here like this. And this guy just comes over the top. That's all there's to it. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to kink this up with as much CA as we can get. Shove it into that hole. I'm going to use the fit of the strike motor to sort of tell it where it needs to set. And when the strike motor gets installed, I think we can just use PVA for it. I don't think it necessarily needs CA, but the CA, eh, maybe. A cool thing about all these is that, from what I can tell, the aft bomb body, or the fin assembly, etc., and the strike motor were both painted gray. So we're not having to deal with like separate masking or any of that kind of bullshit with these. They are just what they are. Right, you know what? Fuck it. this guy with CA. This is where I get impatient and it's so much fun. But we got a pretty good fit there, so cool. We're well on our way. Okay, so the next thing I need to work out is how I want the port loadout to go. Starboard loadout's easy. We've got two pylons, so say this is the inner pylon, right? Outer pylon is over here. Outer pylon has a mur on it with a rock eye hanging out at the back. Inner pylon has our good friend, the AGM-123. Simple. Port side, we have some options. So, say this is the inner pylon again, this time center of the aircraft is that way. There's another pylon that sits right here. We already know that on that pylon is going to be a mur. And at the back, on the lower station, is going to be a rock eye. Now we still have to mount the LAU-10. And so the real question is, where does this guy go? We have two options. First of all, we could mount it to the inner pylon, just like the AGM-123 on the other side. Let it do its thing there. Or, go a little bit crazy, and mount it to... Is this even the right one? I don't think it is. Oh, fuck. I think I might have made a nice mistake yesterday. Indeed I did. Awesome. So yesterday when I glued the uh, aft thing on, I glued it onto the wrong wrong pod. That's the one that I fucked the drilling on. Anyway, glue this one onto the front shoulder like this. So it's kind of the furthest flung, most prominent weapon on this side. And then we take the rock eye and it kind of yoinks onto the back back here like this for some reason I'm not connecting with the holes right now I don't know why there we go now there is overlap which is frustrating but these uh, these multiple ejector racks seem a little bit short like I know that when I was trying to do a bunch of rock eyes at first they would not fit so 
I think this could work though. Uh, the reason that I'm leaning this way is I've seen this configuration multiple times and I've seen the LAU 10s hanging out on the Murr on the outer station quite frequently. So I'm leaning that way. Um, that will also mean that I don't really have to deal all that much with the weird sway braces because these all have the little pins in them. And so I can just be okay with uh, having to suck it up and deal with that. 